April Fools! <laughs> yep, it was a long time in the making, but our second channel prank for April Fools is finally complete. We got you guys good. I can't believe you would think we would make a second channel and play PlayStation and Nintendo on it. Yeah, Mousetrap, what's that about? <laughs> it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. You anyway, oops. thank you for being such good sports about it. And uh, yeah. Uh, hey guys, uh, what's going on? We're, we're here to film show the weekend. Mike, you, you were supposed to tell them. I know, but... Look at their little faces. Oh, tell them now. Uh, so, uh, guys, I have something to um, tell you. Yes, Mike? This channel yeah. it, uh, is a great success, and Andy's promised to take us out for steak dinner to celebrate. Hey! hey steak, steak dinner, dinner! Steak dinner! Steak dinner! Steak dinner! Steak dinner! Woo! Why are they always singing? Show of the weekend, show of the weekend, show of the weekend, show of the weekend, show of the weekend. So Luke, mm. uh, have you managed to prise yourself away from Zelda and play anything else? Well, not willingly, but Andy <laughs> called me and he was like, uh, "Into something, something intervention, something, yeah, something." Got my messages. Me, so. Yeah, barest professional standards, something, exact something. Exact words. And he dragged me off to play a game called Get Even. Ooh. You got out. How did you get out? You can't leave me here. Just hang on. What's going on here? Where are we? Please, you've got to help me. The switch there, it opens this door. You, you have to help me. And so now I'm going to talk about that. Cool. But I'm going to be thinking about Zelda, because <laughs> you can't police this. Can you? <laughs> yeah. The game is Get Even, and it's a bit of a weird one, because it's sort of been knocking around since, I think, like 2014, ah. in one form or another. It's one of those games that was sort of announced, but I think right. it was, I think it, I think they announced it when, like, someone had just had the idea to make a game. Oh, yeah, like, they we'll, like, let's do this. We'll make one of those video games. And only now is it approaching being a sort of real game. Right. Published by uh, Bandai Namco, and the developer is called The Farm 51. Right. Um, which I hadn't heard of before. They made a game called Deadfall Adventures. The 51st of all the farms. The 51st. <laughs> is it like the small farm attached to Area 51? <gasps> yes! Yeah! That makes total <laughs> sense. <laughs> if you work in Area 51, you can't pop to Sainsbury's yeah, or whatever because yeah. they're going to be like, who's this army guy? Uh, There's not an army base around here. No. Is there? Let's uh, think, you know, that won't fly. Get their milk and eggs and things like that. Exactly. Aww. There's a cow that knows more about aliens than we do. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Deadfall Adventures, which is, I, I think, their last game before Get Even. It's an adventure game set in the world of Alan Quartermain. Right. Which is quite a cool sell. We uh, played it, right, Andy? It was rubbish. Did we not play it? We played it three years ago, Andy, and it was so memorable that you've completely forgotten we played it. Whoa! Frame rate is all over the place. Some nice gob, gob rays, though. Yeah. Blow up the dynamite. <laughs> no, this doesn't work. <laughs> Hilarious comedy crap balls. <laughs> Wah, wah. Oh, this is their like bantery relationships yeah. as modelled on Nathan yeah. Drake. This will be uh... you can climb off me now, Mr. Quartermain. Oh God! <laughs> uh, no, I think only me and Jane played it. Sorry. Well, we get, we get <laughs> vindicated. Vindicated. It was bad, guys. It was real bad. Okay, right. <laughs> but this looks okay. better. Okay. So I've played um, like the first two hours of the game. Mm -hmm. um, there's kind of nothing in it that you haven't seen in some game or movies somewhere. But when it's all sort of thrown together, I actually found the experience kind of compelling. Yeah. So it's set in this old timey sanatorium of the kind of mental health facility that should never have been commissioned and like would never certainly never fly now. It's got a sort of weird scientist who's invented this thing that straps to your face, uh, which always lets you- Always good. Always good, always promising. If you yeah. go to the doctor and they're like, well, I have an experimental face contraption. <laughs> just, just <laughs> When you've got this sort of face contraption on, you can journey into your own memories by looking at photos. The reason that this is happening to you as the protagonist who, let me just say right now to dispel any rumours and preempt any disappointment, is not Sean Bean, um, despite how it sounds. Here's how it sounds. Oh, my head. There was a bomb. A girl. Those wires are probably warm. I could trace them back to them. I know why I was there to save the girl. It sounds like Sean Bean, but it isn't. There are some fun mechanics in it. So uh, your smartphone plays a big role and you have to sort of switch between the apps on your phone 
to solve puzzles and, and things like that, at least in <laughs> so the... So you're stuck, you go, Twitter, help. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Trapped in room. Catch a Pokemon in Pokemon Go to proceed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This guy's got like the best phone in the world. There's a little thing in the corner of the date that says uh, 2011, mm. and in 2011, to sort of set the scene phone-wise, that was the iPhone 4S came out that summer. Autumn. It was the first iPhone to come out not in the summer. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Um, Sorry. <laughs> The other thing that's kind of cool is that early on you get given this gun, which is a corner gun, so it shoots around corners, so you can sort of flip the muzzle. Too soon to tell, really. Early signs of I mean, in the game, it's sold as a very high-tech thing, but Andy and I clocked using our clever brains that it is just a hinge. Bullets are pushed forward through explosions. Yes. And the explosion happens in the back end of the barrel. The whole gun turns around. So, ah, yeah. so it's not just the end of the barrel. Exactly. What they've invented is a gun on a stick. A gun on a stick on a hinge. <laughs> <laughs> in Get Even, the way that you sort of shoot sneakily from cover is to like lie on your back with the corner gun and like so it's pointing that way. Like if there was a wall here, yeah. I'd be like, and you wouldn't even know. <laughs> Does this look like the ultimate stealth kill? Hinge everything. Hinge is the new, honestly, 2017 is the year of the hinge. Ellen's hinging her legs I've right now. Got, I need to get, oh, I've got hinges. Nature's hinge, the <laughs> knee. <laughs> Christmas 2017, everyone's gonna be opening hinges on Christmas morning, <laughs> or hinged products, you'll see. Think how many hinges you're using already. Just think about it, just, that's all I'm asking. Just think, be open-minded, open, hinge, hinge your mind open. <laughs> um, the, I think Luke it's literally, is unhinged. It's literally the opposite <laughs> of unhinged, if you think about it, because everything has so many hinges. It's got a, that sort of slightly unsettling first person psychological horror thing, but it doesn't seem like it's as extreme as something like mm. Outlast no. or even Resident Evil 7. It's a little bit tamer, a little bit more accessible. It's like the difference between watching a horror film and like a thriller, you know yeah, what I mean? Or I something. love thrillers, can't really watch horror films. Who doesn't so. love a thriller? They often have Harrison Ford in them. Mm. The more you play it, the more consistency and the more story uh, mm -hmm. does appear. And at the end of those two hours, I did feel like I had a grasp on the, the kind of fictional timeline and what was going on and what all the characters' motivations were, which I think is a good sign. I hadn't really heard of the game much before we, we played no, it. No, I'd not, I'd not. It's coming out in May. Yeah. Uh, it's a really bad title. Get Even it is very sort of, yeah, it's, it's that quite sounds generic, isn't it? Yeah, like kind of the subtitle to a film. It sounds like something you, uh, tag on the end of a Fast and Furious title. Fast and Furious 11, Get, get even. even. If that's not the one with horses with human hands or... <laughs> I mean, it's not too late to change the name. It is. Yeah, it probably is. <laughs> I've probably printed the boxes. The marketing department watching this going... <laughs> 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 what if they just changed it to Get Eventful? Yeah. yeah. And just add, wor add the words. Get Event... Forget Eventually. Forget yeah. Eventually. Well, yeah. Gettysburg 7. That's pretty good, right? Nice. That, just some Sharpie on the boxes <laughs> yeah. as they're going out the door. Maybe I, I, we've just got an inflated sense of our own instincts after correctly predicting that Nero Automata was going to be good. But I, I did sort of think, oh, I think this is kind of cool. I think it's pretty interesting. Like, yeah. it, feels like, it, feels like, it feels like there's something to it. I think I would happily play another two hours based on the two hours I played. Right. There's some surprising stuff in there that I can't talk about without giving anything away. But it'd be worth keeping an eye on. You, sure you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And so. I, would in, you know, I would encourage you if you watch this and you thought it sounded even barely interesting to watch um, me and Andy playing it because we talk a lot about <laughs> hinges. <laughs> Isn't it just a, a hinge? <laughs> Basically. No, it's, it's, it's different. <laughs> we I mean, have hinge technology. It, it absolutely is a hinge. <laughs> so if you thought, oh no, I wish Luke had talked about hinges for the whole show, <laughs> there's more hinge talk out there for you. The international recognized <laughs> sign of the hinge. Hinges are all through your body. Hinge. Or else, how could I do this? <laughs> I didn't do that very well. <laughs> That's cool. Um, but right now, as of this, you watching this video, if you're watching this on the day that it's uploaded, we are currently at EGX Res, which is full of what, lots of wonderful, cool indie titles. <coughs> In honor of EGX Res and its love of indie games, I'm gonna be giving you Ellen's ultimate indie game quiz. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. We didn't rehearse this. <laughs> Let's, Let's go. go. Right, Luke, mm. so at this very moment, if you're watching this on a Saturday before 6 p.m. GMT or BST, because the clock's went forward, we're probably playing right now. We've got our hands on some cool indie games yes. that are coming up. I'm going to test you on your knowledge 
of indie games. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Oh, but no. in a fun, interesting way that huh? only we do on this channel. Oh, so. thank goodness. It's fine. <laughs> I.e. no actual <laughs> trivia yeah. or knowledge required. <laughs> Woo! Okay, question regarding Snake Pass. Snake Pass. All right, Snake, snake pass, pass looks great. Has you play as a snake trying to climb obstacles with no limbs and only the help of your tail holding hummingbird friend. You're right there, Lee. I'm um, getting into the headspace of a snake. Getting into the headspace of a snake. I'm right. cold blooded and presumably other snake things. <laughs> <laughs> what physical activity do you find the most impossible to do and would like a small hummingbird to help you with? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do the last. <laughs> I love that this question is immediately nothing to do with snakes. You took the aspect of snake parts. <laughs> that is not snakes and ran with that. Okay. But it's difficult. Like, being a snake is difficult for us as humans. It's, you know. Being a snake is difficult for us <laughs> as humans. Okay, so if I had a hummingbird to help me. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. Well, I tell you what. I'm. And this might surprise you, Ellie. <laughs> I'm not actually very good at things that require fine motor skills. <laughs> things like threading needles, yeah. or like uh, neat handwriting, or playing video games. Things like that I find almost impossible. Also being left-handed, yeah. greetings cards in particular are a nightmare for me because the... the oh, sort of, smudge. Yeah, the, the paper stock is often kind of waxy and you just, it's very, very hard not to smudge. When you said video games, <laughs> I just envisioned like our future Let's Plays. Yeah. Like us chatting and I'm like, Luke, what's that noise? <laughs> 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 nothing, nothing at the minute, right? Yeah, yeah. If the hummingbird could do the camera, like by well, move, the hummingbird moving could, the like, stick, like does the well, not so much the camera. It would be easiest if he'd like just did all the buttons. Oh yeah, did the face really buttons? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He could sort of put his little feet like this on on the triggers. Yeah. And then kind of lean over and pick the face buttons <laughs> yeah. like that. Yeah. I like the idea of having a hummingbird write my greetings cards for me as well. Because I've always just in tiny footprints. <laughs> yeah, I know, and I've, I've, no, no, no. It would dip its, dip the tip of its, its pen beak. in, of, of its pen, of its beak <laughs> in, in, in an inkwell, and be like, oh, and it could have little glasses, little half moon glasses, and then I could live my dream of pacing around a room while dictating, <laughs> dictating. my letters. Yeah. Dear Ellen, <laughs> happy birthday. Hope you have a good one. Smiley face. No, big grin, smiley face. <laughs> Fondest regards, Luke. Dictated but not read. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mm. want someone to draw I mean. that. <laughs> I don't like requesting fan art for that, please. Arrow. Oh yeah, yeah, arrow. Okay. That's the dubstepy, spacey, yeah. round and round in circle. Womp, womp, womp. Arrow is a rhythm action game where you travel along ribbons of light, fighting off enemies and ridiculously giant bosses. If you had to battle a giant version of one of the outside Xbox gang through a magnetic <laughs> man track, what through, would it through be? Through a what? Through a... To a magnetic man track. Who oh, okay, right, the, yeah, uh, sure. A, a very good uh, band sure. dubstep group okay. that you should listen to. Right. A couple of DJs. Okay. Who would you choose? Hmm. So it's basically like a Shadow of the Colossus situation, like which of the other team would I most like to sort of Climb up if I was tiny? Well, no, no, it's not climbing up. Drive around them in your spaceship following ribbons of light and shooting at them. So I can't climb up them? No. Mike often wears high top shoes. I thought they'd be pretty climbable. Yeah. I feel like Mike would be a very, like, instinctive and violent boss. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't of... have the nice kind of, oh, I'm gonna yeah, you would, come back it and would, eat. It wouldn't be like, uh, and charge. It would just be like, legs explode. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, face, <laughs> bam, bam. Legs gone. That's <laughs> accurate. You dodge, you dodge, and then I hit the wall behind you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Jane. If Jane's going to be a more sort of predictable, like, yeah. like hit three times, like stun, and then get it dodge going close. Oh, yeah, I'll go for Jane. Andy yeah. would be too stealthy. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to find yeah. him. In Jane the could be a, a sort of good middle ground between the, the violence and, and the deadly stealth of the other two. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Good answer. Fight good a giant answer. Jane. When All right, let's go. <laughs> oh, <no>. Jane <laughs> sprints. <laughs> I imagine her like jumping with like the way Wolverine does, like yeah. with claws, like <laughs> City Skylines. City 
Skylines allows you to build up huge cities with magnificent skylines, trading with other cities and giving your residents places to live, shop and work. But there are four types of spaces in... What's that look? You no, like... that, 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 that look is... That, <laughs> that was, was a... your scanning for lies one. Scanning for lies. No, it was, it was a please go on. Four kinds of like zones or areas that you can um, allocate areas to be. Tell me, Luke, mm. are you a residential commercial, mm. industrial, or office area type of guy. With the best will in the world, probably not industrial. Yeah. We've talked about me not being very good at man a lot manual of manual labor. dexterity. Yeah. So I figure like I'd quite quickly I'd get my hand jammed in something, <laughs> or some sort of big roller or press. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> my first day fed into the machine. <laughs> commercial I imagine is a sort of like Mad Men, like Madison Avenue. That sounds very yeah, sort of like- where shops are. Oh, okay. Um, I have worked in retail. I wasn't very good at it. Um, oh, I was. <laughs> everything's competition. So competitive. <laughs> Residential, I think. Mm -hmm. Just to just to hang out at home. I really like the way that when you live somewhere, you can decorate it how you want. Yeah. And you can't do that. Your space. You can't do that in an office. I mean, you can a bit with some to, like- To an extent, like- Yeah, like I've had entertaining desk knickknacks. Yeah. And a mug that I didn't like when it entered gen pop mug circulation. <laughs> and then it just goes and you're like, where's my big Alton Towers mug? My mug now. I'm drinking out of it. <laughs> 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 it was so big! <laughs> yeah, so definitely residential. I liked, yeah, that's where I feel most at home. <laughs> hey. Rhyme. Rhyme is an upcoming puzzle adventure game which sees a boy trying to escape an island where he has a little fox as his guide and companion. This is the one that looks a little bit wind wakery, right? It's yes. got that cell shaded. I love yeah. that yeah. art style. If you could have any animal companion be your guide on a desert island, what animal would it be? So it's not just like an animal companion, it's like it's got to be a guide. Yeah. Well, not a fish. Because a fish couldn't get out of the sea or the lake or the pond. That's good to that's good to know. And I can't exactly get into the water to, to I mean still I can with the fish thing. Well no, I'm just explaining why I'm discounting You're them. You're still explaining to our viewers why we're not doing the fish thing. Yeah. But well, you know, I feel that <laughs> they our audience are intelligent. They deserve all the aren't they deserve answers. Well did you not think they're intelligent enough to know that To figure out why a fish yeah. wouldn't be a very good I do tour guide. On an island. <laughs> Okay, all right. It's just not a fish. Fine. <laughs> what was the question? My favourite fish? Top ten fish? Um, no. <laughs> Trout, haddock, sailfish. <laughs> I'm also going to rule out reptiles and lizards, although I have a lot of fondness for them. I know you really like dinosaurs. I love dinosaurs. Love dinosaurs, although taxonomically they're more akin to birds. So actually, maybe a bird, a heron, a lovely heron. I like heron. a heron because, yes, they're sort of big and they're graceful. Like and you. Well, big. <laughs> I feel like a heron would be very good as a guide because yeah. it can point with its wing, you know, like oh. over Not there. With, like the big pointy thing on its face. No, it's making eye contact okay. to me with that, like this. Okay. Over there. Do you remember the heron in Animals of Farthing Wood? Yes. Whistler, I think it was called. Yeah. Because it got shot through the wing. Yeah. And so its wing made a I'd have a heron and I'd shoot its wings. <laughs> no, 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 I wouldn't do that. But if it arrived with a hole in its wing that made a whistling noise, so much the better. Cuphead. What do you call me? <laughs> Cuphead is a much awaited much awaited rock hard run and gun platformer which sees two liquid holding heroes battle lots of enemies and bosses. If you had to be yeah. one of the heroes in Cuphead, mm. okay, what drink would you hold in your head that best represents you? Not a hot or burning liquid, I suppose, because Well it, it doesn't matter because like they, they are like coffee cups. But what if I fell over? It I would don't... be fine, it wouldn't hurt you. But it would hurt others. No, because the others around you are just enemies trying to kill you, so it doesn't matter. They're just really angry plants most of the time. Okay. Oh, well, then maybe like some sort of liquid weed killer. Would you drink okay. that, though? Because the question no. is drink. Why would I drink it? It's my own head. No. 
What tr drink? <laughs> this represents you. So like, this drink is, their, their entire heads are cups. So, <laughs> this is very like, like being really like. Using my bedside manner. Yeah. Yes, everyone's head <laughs> is a cup. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Increase the dosage. <laughs> I'm just asking if you were a drink. Increase the dosage. What would you be? We need restraints in here. <laughs> the drink that like is you. Okay. I would say you were a nice Earl Grey. Earl Grey then. Jeez, wow. <laughs> but what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> you do want to know what I, I think. I want to know what you think. That's, the, that's why it's a question. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd just state what I think. Okay. Um. Well. Yeah, a cup of tea. I drink tea most. So, yeah, so nice, cu nice cup of tea. English breakfast. English breakfast tea, uh, milk, and this is going to be controversial, but one sugar. I'm trying to wean myself off it because I know it's not the thing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I do like a sugar in the tea. A cup of tea. Good. Is that acceptable? Wait, that's fine. I don't think you're a wee killer. I think you're very nice. You're too nice to be a wee killer. It's oh, the nicest thing anyone's ever said about me. <laughs> oh, God, I'm sorry. <laughs> That was the last question, so oh. it's, it's good that I lost it on that one and not sooner. I hope that you at home have learned something about indie games. <laughs> you definitely have. It's amazing quiz. There are a lot of really I'm cool indie games out this year. There are. There are a lot. Like just it took a lot for there. me to just like cut down to five. It's nice to give little indie games a, a shout highlight. out. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, cool. should we find out what you guys have been saying in the comments? Ooh. This week we rolled the dice of destiny and turned the crank of fate, delving into the deadly maze that is Mousetrap. Oh. Oh. Get stuck in, Ellen. <laughs> One, One, two, two three, three, four! Cheese. How's the cheese, Ellen? <laughs> Ellen, how does it taste? How does it taste? <laughs> yes, that's right. Gorge yourself on the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Loudon Ferguson adds, Wow, this was a great video. Looks like some of you were really fit up with each other by the end. Don't worry, it all gets cheddar from here. Luke, did you secretly write this comment? No, I always know when a comment is mine. How? Because when I see it, I say, hello me. Disgusting. Elsewhere, Kippers the Khajiit returned to Skyrim, questing for adventure with a host of magically conjured animal companions of varying moral quality. Look, the cow's running away again. <laughs> <laughs> Just summon more cows. <laughs> <laughs> nope, no! <laughs> oh, let's get the, the mud crabs. Yeah, the mud crabs. I want to test the mud crabs' combat powers. Nice! Yes! <laughs> Immediately! Come on, mud crabs! Squad! <laughs> squad, <laughs> squad, squad goals! goals. <laughs> Alliterative annotator APC Socks astutely added. Kippers the Khajiit's cowardly cow continues to completely disappoint his master during combat. Kippers crabs can at least fight. Nice alliteration. Nice kitty alliteration. Uh, please, Ellen, we're doing alliteration now. Puns was before. Elsewhere on the channel. We recounted the times we were given just a taste of immense power and wisdom before having it cruelly snatched away just moments later. Maybe it's to give us a little taster of what awaits hardworking gamers in the later stages of an adventure. Or maybe it's just because they hate us and want us to be sad that one. David Evans has another example saying, how about school? One minute you have naps, juice boxes and understand triangles and the next moment no naps, no juice boxes and the triangle is Greek. Yeah but hold your nerve because once you get through school adult life features a lot more napping. And the juice is a flowing. Night Luke. If you could be any animal in the world, what would it be? Pop quiz, you're a dolphin. You what? <laughs> <laughs> that was the worst dolphin impression I've ever heard. That wasn't an impression. Speaking of impressions, how's your Blues Brothers tribute band coming along? Not good. Oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> On the plus side, we've pretty much got the percussion section down. You fine. <laughs> Mmm, jazzy. And I'll tell you what else has a funky, fresh groove. You guys, yeah. <laughs> for watching this show. You should be even funkier and fresher by liking this video and subscribing if you haven't already. They're Getting be super funky. More fresh. funky, more fresh. Yes. With each of those things <laughs> that you do. <laughs>
<laughs> uh, thank you for watching, guys. Yes, thank you so much again for watching us waffle on about silly things in video games for ages. We great. really appreciate we it. Appreciate like, it. subscribe, all the rest of the stuff. Right, Yay. Ellen, I think it's time for another juice break. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm getting another nap. Yeah, yeah another nap. Go for it. Cheers. 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 Nice. Mm. Good taste of juice. Mm.